goodness, we're singing glory to his name. Glory to his name.
Uh, I just thank God for the health to even share this. Um, I just thank God for it because when you have a situation or an experience where you got issues breathing, yeah. where to the point where I couldn't even sing, I couldn't talk without having shortness of breath at one point, I couldn't play the organ without feeling like I had just worked out, did a hard workout, and 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 to have that. Uh, um, to just take a full reverse to the point where where I can I can do all those things again. I thank God that I have my health today. People don't know that that, that that yeah, I was in the hospital a few weeks ago, and I'm not the type of person that 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 reports everything, but I thank God. And I'm still here. Yes, yes, yes. I thank God of the circumstances that I would turn down. I thank God, despite the situation that I that I'm dealing with, because of, of the, the fact that I got sick, there's some things that have been going on that I just have to deal with. But despite that, yes. I thank God for my health. Right. I thank God for the ability to speak. Right. I thank God for the ability yes. to raise my hands with no problem. I thank God. For the ability yeah. to give you praise with no problem. I think I can the Lord like I want to do. Hallelujah. God is so good. Yeah. Yeah. And I thank God for that experience this morning because the pride thing kind of took over. It's like, man, because I, I, 
I wanted to, but we got service today. You can come back for that later. But like I said, but like we said, it, it, the body of life is not about us. And it's not about getting people saved. It's about helping somebody. And as long as you can put a seed in them to cause them, this, it has everything to do with this lesson this morning. And God always uncles me with these lessons, and I thank God for even that, with these lessons that we get from our Sunday school. But I thank God for that brother, because I was hesitant to take him where I needed to take him. But I thank God that I did it because he really had a humble heart. He really had a faithful heart. He really wanted to be his family and himself. And I thank God for that experience this morning. It's not about you. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. I thank God for these lessons. I thank God for helping me keep my head straight. I thank God for just keeping me just, just strengthening me and everything I need to be strengthened with. I thank God for just the, the, the long suffering he had with me before because somebody was going to suffer with me before I received it. So we have to show the same courtesy. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We take the Holy Ghost for granted sometimes. This is the we don't take the Holy Ghost for granted. Understand what it's for and why he gave it to us. Understand the cost that he paid for us to even have it, to have an opportunity to speak on his behalf. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the stuff that we do and we put up with, this is a privilege to be able to speak to speak on God's behalf. This is a privilege for us to share the gospel with somebody. Hallelujah! 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 Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Everybody that's going through, I encourage you. Trust God. I know we've got we, we, a lot of us go through some tragic stuff, and we have to deal with a lot of negative situations. But I implore you, I, I beg you to trust God. Hallelujah. Keep trusting God. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on him. Hallelujah. The name of our lesson is help to understand God's call. The focus verse is First Samuel chapter 10, verse 6 through 7. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Thank you, Jesus. So the lesson is, is, is in the lesson, it, it, it's pretty much talking about. Uh, God's call and understanding when God is calling you, when God is talking to you, uh, when God is leading you a certain way to do a certain thing. And uh, reading this about Samuel and, uh, and uh, Saul was very interesting because there's some things I didn't know. Um, so uh, starting at the top of the lesson, um, God called Samuel. Samuel and Saul lived during a momentous time in Israel's history as the nation moved from the tumultuous days of the judges to kingship. The book of Judges is full of increasing chaos and violence. As we move into the book of 1 Samuel, we see God calling Samuel to be a prophet and so much more. He was a king maker a priest, and the last judge of Israel. But the people grew weary 
of the judges and God leading them. They desired a king like all the other nations. God warned them of their choice before giving them what they demanded. Samuel anointed Saul to become the first king of the nation. Both Samuel's and Saul's stories reveal the importance of having godly ministries and spiritual advisors to help us make sense of God's call. Young Samuel relied on the wisdom of Eli to help him understand God, cause him to be a prophet. So if you know that story, you know that Samuel, I'm sorry, you, you know that, yeah, you know that Samuel, um, he was called by God uh, uh, multiple times, and he thought it was Eli calling him because he didn't recognize it was the voice of God. And so uh, Eli told him what to do and what to say if he heard God speak again, and he said exactly that. And so that started his uh, pathway to being a, a prophet. And so, um, and also, it also, in, in, in his starting of the process, he also had to tell Eli of his, um, of what God shared with him. So, and he had to give him the full blown story that Eli and his sons were going to die. And he did it in detail. So uh, that's what happened when God gave Samuel his gift and his talent, and he prepared Samuel. The thing is, is uh, uh, Samuel could have, um, the, the thing is, is the way his life went is that his mother uh, partitioned God for him on his behalf when he was a baby. She, she, she prayed for him and partitioned God for him. And, and, and his life took a certain kind of route where he had big time credibility, he had big time uh, 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 notoriety, and, 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 and people trusted in him because the people that he may have wanted to give to like his successor, they all had, you know, they were untrustworthy. So and so he was chosen. And so when he chose uh, when he chose Saul to be king. Um, you know, it was they they, they they accepted what he had, had done because of his credibility. So um, Samuel used his prophetic gifts to pave the way for Saul to become king. At first, Saul was reluctant to accept the mantle of king, but the Lord helped him overcome his inadequacies. Saul started out well, but he should have uh, paid more attention to the words of Samuel and allow Samuel to mentor him. So one of the questions posed in the lesson, to whom can you turn for godly advice and what advice from them has helped you in the past? If anybody wants to uh, give an answer to that. Yeah, I have good, very good answers. Very good. Um, Mother, who understood one of you might get that, and I'm saying that because she that from a child, she didn't last her, and she knew I would come to her, and she nurtured. So, my mother was my first mentor in giving the king education, and then my godmother gave me vision. I was a way of learning to be a she understood my way of thinking and how God taught me in a, in a kind of different way from my peers. And then after Bishop Price passed away, Bishop uh, Richardson Sr. was a mentor, very instrumental, not to mention Mr. Short. And they all came to this point in my life because of the juncture I was at in my journey. Each juncture God had someone planned to get for where I was in the journey of coming into the understanding of it all the So I bless God for that. Steve Jordan, yeah. His mention of me at those different points of my journey. 
there's a scripture. Uh, I was going to save it for the end, but no, it, there's a scripture that. Uh, But there's a scripture that we that, 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 that totally describes us in our growing to get to the point where God can use us. I myself never saw myself ever teaching anything regarding the Bible. And I have to use myself because the thing is, what's going to break down is you're going to see because Saul felt at one point that he was inadequate uh, to do anything. And um, God used him to unite nations in order to build that kingdom. And he thought he was an adequate. He, he just thought, uh, no, not me. And I thought about myself when I was uh, going to Bible college all these years, not understanding what God was building in me in order to, to like, Sister the Evangelist Horns office says, you've got to point to other people. Maria Ryan, she said, you've got to point to other people. I've heard him say that many times that you have to, it's time to stop taking it. We have enough, we're overflowing. It's time to start to, you got to pour to other people and help them. Because everybody don't have this thing. Everybody needs knowledge. Everybody needs an understanding. Like you were saying, everybody, uh, you never know who you're talking to to plant that seed. You never know that you planted it. And years later, you might find out that they've been delivered. And then they said, I remember you. Because see, I, can, I, I have those kind of, experiences where during the process of God taking me through before I ever start teaching and I and I and I shared this with my family but I was on Metro Rail one time and there was this short Spanish lady I'm this big six foot imposing dude maybe to her and she needed to give me a word from the Lord and she was reluctant but she did it and she came and asked me, do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you, are you, are you, do you feel with the Holy Ghost? Have you been baptized in Jesus? And I said, yes. And she simply said, don't give up. And the thing is, is I was going through something very personal. And my eyes just teared up. Because the very thing I was going through, I was about to give up. That's literally what I needed. And so she said, don't give up. Jesus. And God just... What? Touched me in a way that I appreciate. And I can't even think of it without getting emotional because I know that was from God. Yes, yes. I know it's from. Yes. See, there's people always say things and uh, God's got something for you. He's got this ministry for you. No, go give me something. And you confirm it in me to somebody I don't know because that was my prayer. Confirm it in somebody that I don't know to tell me that and then I'll accept it. Because it's very hard to some people that know you. They might say it because they want to see you do it. They might say it because they have an agenda. But when you ask God for a certain kind of confirmation that I can absolutely know you were involved in it, that's what he did. And so when she said that to me, I was so grateful. And she was grateful, with God, because she saw the tears in my eyes. And she began to react. I said, Lord, I thank you for that. You never know who you're going to run into. Yeah. I believe that I was entertained an angel, but I was a rest. I believe this is an angel. Because of the certain circumstances that happened, because of the topic that the person was talking to me about, that I know what I'm doing. So I'm saying, I, I, I believed. So I was like, Lord, I thank you for this experience. I thank you for that experience. But still, I didn't know I was coming this way. So I did all that time, and I was just trying to keep my mind in the church, so I would do Bible college. I was playing in the band, and in the band at our church, and I just wanted to keep my mind right, because people at church would test you. People at church would try to, would try to uh, seduce you in many different ways, whether it's sexual, whether it's you know, I mean, somebody had the nerve to act to tell me that, that, that they see me at a, at a, at a uh, uh, gay club. And I'm like, man, I don't do that. That don't live here. No, you didn't. And, 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 and I'm like, they would just challenge you at every hand. Jesus. They would say things insulting. They would, and I was like, Lord, why am I here? I'm building. Oh, I'm building. Yeah. And I didn't know it at the time. I can say that now. But 
my pastor would always say, you need to stop letting people get under your skin. So guess what? The test kept coming because people kept saying things that I would wanted to strike back on. There were people that said things to make me want to fight them right there on the spot. There were people that said things to make me just want to lash and say, I'm done with these people. I don't want to be here no more. I'm done. I'm going to sue you for defamation of character because you're lying on me. All that stuff. But it never happened because God was in it. And he knew he was helping me grow. I still didn't see it. I'm still closed right here. My, my, my eyes were still covered. I didn't see that he was helping me grow. And so the more I learned, the more I, I didn't even know I was taking it in that well. Because I talked to a lot of different people. Some of the people, evangelists born to mention, I picked their brain. But I didn't pick their brain to become this. I picked their brain because I just love the Lord. I was just interested in learning about it. I just like to learn about it. Yeah. And, and, and one coach told me, uh, one coach, uh, he said, I heard a coach say, he said, the, the moment you know that when, when you have done something so long and you have the ability to explain it, and you have the ability that means you know it and you should be somebody to help somebody when you're able to give it to them and be able to clearly explain it. And the, the more I took in, the more I took in, the more better that I get, the more uh, uh, the, 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 the more knowledge he gave me to, 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 to try to convey it to somebody as clear as I could. Not that I'm the best, I know I'm not the best teacher, but if you see me 20 years ago when I first started, by compared to where I am now, you'd be like, oh, hey man, that's been a complete turnaround. It's about face with that because I didn't, I felt inadequate. And then and they list things about how Moses was stuck in that and some other people before they got their leadership spots. And yet they said, Lord, I don't know what to do. Because see, God knows, see, I know you will depend on me. I know before you do anything, you're going to kneel down in prayer or and, and ask me for help. I know you are not going to give nobody bad information. I know you strongly. Strongly, you feel strongly about the gospel, and you're not going to let anybody taint it. You take it seriously, and 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 when you are taking this gospel seriously, God will we He will put you in a position to where people will see it. And so they, Troy, would you be do, do this? Would you teach for us? Would you say, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I was already busy in the music department anyway, and I was already busy in the missionary department. So I was doing my due diligence. I was like, I, I got a lot on my plate. I can't know what we want you to do this. So, so I would do it every once in a while. Because I because we had a, an incredible staff of teachers at that church. And I mean, you feel inadequate. You got these people who break it down like they do. And you feel inadequate to, I can't do that. I can't just no confidence. It's like I, I can't do that. Said you can do all things through Christ, man. That's strengthened you. Yes, you can. And so once I I, I started, and I'm just trying to tell you how he called me to this because I didn't even know I was being called to do anything like this. I was really cool with just playing an organ. God gave me such a talent because my, my talent alone is a miracle. Amen. So I was like, I, I, I know what, what happens. I know. My, my talent is based on the fact that I had interest in praying. One of the elders saw fit to pray for my hands. And it never, and God just been giving it to me. And the biggest compliment I've ever got regarding playing is that this dude keeps the move. And I said, Lord, I thank you for that. No, I, I don't play. I'm not the best musician. Now, I know that. But everybody that I've, not everybody, but a lot of people that I've talked to said, man, you keep improving. You never stop improving. And, and the first sermon that, that the first sermon that I got was from Gentry Richardson Jr. Outside those doors, when I first started playing, and he gave me a lecture on really it was a sermon, and he gave me such a sermon about the integrity of playing this organ and living right, the integrity of the sound in church. We help usher. And the spirit of God, and you got to have your mind right when you're up there playing. And it was a 10 to 15 minute sermon, and I never forgot that. Mother Richardson 
was one of my biggest fans, and she encouraged me so I felt like she was my grandma because she encouraged me so much. Yeah. It was like I, every time, no matter how bad I played, she was always encouraged me, she's gonna get better. To the point said, man, I heard Gentry today, man. You said I'm like Gentry today. And y'all know how I feel about Gentry's ability to play. And I'm like, Lord, I thank you. I'm sorry, Pastor Gentry Richardson. I'm so sorry. But I said, Lord, I thank you for just, it's just growth. And it's growth. And it's growth. Yeah. And all of us, and, and when God is calling you, and even though you feel inadequate, just answer, you, you can answer the call. Say, Lord, you know what? Because I said, you know what? That's not me, but if you need help, I'll try. And that's where it started. So I'm like, so I started, and then I began to actually enjoy it because you start picking out what did I say wrong. They'll come at you and Troy, next time say it this way, next time do it this way, but good job. And, and then you get your critique taken, especially from teachers that 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 taught you and are concerned to make sure you can make this stuff right because somebody's soul is at stake. I do not understand any pastor or leader that gets up here knowing that if you give people bad information, you have to answer to God for that. I don't even know how that moment has come on people to deliberately give people bad information, to tell them that it's your imagine, imaginary thinking, to think that's all God is, and he's only as real as the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and the Tooth Fairy. It's not imaginative, man. You can have the Holy Ghost. It's real. So if you really study the Bible and you're obedient to the Bible, God will, he will guide you into that truth so you can receive the salvation. It's real. So... As a leader, there's a lot of things that come with this leadership thing. When God calls you to do certain things, you got to have some integrity behind it. You can't be somebody that says you have all the answers, but you have all the answers, but you don't have no experience. And the quality, and I have the qualifications listed by comparison to kings in the Bible, comparisons to bishops and pastors. And I'm like, Lord, it, it, it's, it's almost identical. The, 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 the qualifications that comes with it's almost identical. That you have to be a certain way. And when I read some of that to y'all, y'all gonna be like, yep, yep, because you have so many people that are not, that are doing people a disservice because they want to take the Bible and use it as their personal playground to make money. They want to use it as their personal playground to build their, 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 their finances. They want to use it as their personal playground. And I'm like, why would you use this? Not this. Not this. There's too many things you can play with, but not this. Somebody's soul is at stake. People are trusting. Yeah, the thing yeah, is, yeah. the one thing we, the human race has always had is that desire for something big, for something more, that spiritual guidance. They've always had that. If you look at the Bible days compared to now, they're always looking for something bigger. Even the people who worship Satan, they're still looking for something bigger than themselves. And I'm like, God has offered that. And that's why you have to be careful of what you say to people. You have to be careful of how you say it. Because when I was out there with that guy, the first thing I wanted to say, you can come back after church. That wasn't my time to say that. He needed help. And he went and came over here and offered himself to ask for help if he needed. And, and that's how I feel. No, I said, he wasn't a money, a, money, a money hungry dude. He was hungry. And, and we, we, we gave him the ability to, to, to feed his family today. And I thank God for that. But it's not about us. And I thank God for that question this morning to be able to recognize that it's not about us. And I thank God for that revelation. Um, so to, to keep going with the, the, the keep, oh, okay, so um, I'm at um, a uh, Samuel's mother's mother dedicated him to the Lord. Samuel might have felt like he had no choice but to accept his calling. But his mother Hannah had dedicated him to the Lord before his birth. She was unable to have children. So Hannah prayed for a child. When she saw was at when she saw was at the Lord's temple. I'm sorry, when she was at the Lord's temple, I'm sorry. She vowed if the Lord would give her a child, she would dedicate him to the Lord. The priest, Ellie, watched her praying and mistakenly thought she was drunk. He even chastised her. Ellie 
Ellie might have had good reason to suspect something nefarious going on in the house of the Lord. Many went to the temple to make sacrifices, but they also drank and feasted. But Hannah was not like the other people. She had not been drinking. She told Eli her story. When he understood her sorrowful situation, he told Hannah to go in peace. And he prayed that the Lord of Israel would grant what she had been praying for. Hannah no longer felt sad. She later conceived and gave birth to a son named Samuel. Fulfilling her promise to dedicate Samuel to the Lord, she weaned him and sent him to live in the temple of Shiloh. So that was her dedication because God gave her a child, so she dedicated him to the Lord. When Samuel heard God speak, Eli helped him understand God's voice. So that's what I was saying earlier that um, he called Samuel. Uh, he called uh, Samuel, and Samuel didn't recognize him. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. And then when Eli told him what to do the next time he heard that voice. He said, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So, uh, and that's how it began. When Samuel answered the call, the Lord told him of his ministry and the fall of the house of Eli. God was going to do something great in Israel, and Samuel would play a vital role in it. So Samuel spoke the word of God to the people, and the Lord confirmed every proclamation, not letting any of Samuel's words fall to the ground. As a result, everyone from Dan to Bersheba knew the Lord had established Samuel as a prophet. Dan was the northernmost part of Israel, and Bersheba the southernmost. A similar phrase might be from coast to coast. Americans might say from New York to LA. God made Samuel's prophetic gifts well known far and wide. So, um, So the next question posed in the lesson is what may be hinder in what may be hindering you from hearing the voice or call of God? If anybody wants to answer it or not, you don't have to. But uh, I say doubt, um, just doubting it, uh, not having a uh, connection point. Um, just not, uh, you know, not just not having that available ear for the things of God. If He's trying to talk to you, and, and you have to, uh, you have to have that available ear to, to hear it. You have to be humble. You have to be willing to hear. It. Imagine this part. Yes, when you when you begin to when you, at some point you listen to people more than. Listen to people and tell you because people will try to tell you what your gift is, they will try to tell you what your call is. And and that's and, and mind you, some you have to be able to hear God in everything. So when you be, when you're able to hear God in everything, when the right person and God is, is pouring into you, you'll be able to, be able to hear God in that. But we listen to too many people. You listen to too many people. Don't like tell you, you know, telling you to do this. Because you may have a gift here, but that's not your call. You understand what I'm saying? And somebody may, may tell you you're, that's your call where you get with, with the gift that you have. But if you listen to too many people, that will make because you it'll 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 uh, numb you to it'll make you tone deaf to hearing God. 
because you put you hold these people up. It's all where you place them. Some people place people too high. And everything that they say, they listen to them, they take it to they just they just take it in as it being the word. When you start taking everything that person said, but did you talk to God about that? Did God tell you that? Or did the person tell you? So you got to be able to decipher whether it's the person and their feelings versus, versus God talking. You understand what I'm saying? Because that, 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 that has happened, you know, a lot of times. That had happened a lot of times. They said, I was, I was, I, I was supposed to be doing this. They said, I don't know, this is what you're supposed to be doing here. But God said, no matter what somebody says, it's whatever God says. I have, I, 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 and I can say that because I, I would give everybody know I'm, I'm, I'm very secure everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. But I love doing it. I love all the ambitions and, and, and the pastors and everything. That's what I love to do. That's the gift. But I called to the man that he called me to preach. He called me to teach. But that's the gift. Even though it kind of works in yeah. it, it kind of works in it. Yeah, works. yeah it works in it. But he, the call is for me to preach, teach. But many years, many years, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be on this. Then the word of God came to me while I was sitting doing my gift. You're coming out the back. This is not where you should stay. You are to pray and preach. It's you back here. But you're coming out the back. Had I not heard all I said was yes, Lord. And I always tell you, you take the way out of So that it, within all of that, when the person came and the word came out, was that the key of God. Didn't know when, didn't know how. But he did it. But still, I was operating to my kids. Okay, so I believe uh, in the world there is a lot of limitation, a lot of, of things that can hinder us, whether it's people, whether it's the media, television, radio, music, any in any sense, when you go out there, when you come back home. You come back home with different thoughts than once you left out. Um, but you know, we can look at it in a different way too. What is inside of us that that can hinder us? And then these are beautiful gifts, right? That, that we have to let them grow, let them nourish, let, let them we have to live in them and accept them, which are the fruits, the, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And other fruits, right? So we have love, we, we have long suffering, mercy, thanksgiving. We have so so many gifts that we have inside of us. And some of us we have them, uh, you know, we have them uh, really high that when others can see it in us, they can see like, oh, I, I see how, how much care you have for others, or I see how kind you are. And, and that can, can help us break through those barriers, you know? Because if, if it wasn't for the, the gifts that were inside of me, even before I started coming to church, even before I started praying, the, the, the beautiful fruits of, of faith, of love, and of hope, I probably wouldn't even be. And, and if I didn't have those, that would have been the hinder to everything else. Yeah. Like, oh, great, that's, that's why I mentioned the here. Um, one of the things that, that even, even less inadequate, you know, some of the things you can do where you can see yourself um, becoming towards what God is calling you 
and evil. So you can you sort of as you as you look at maybe that other people or you look at other things, not seeing it in yourself. So inadequacy within yourself, that unbelief, which leads can lead to unbelief, you know, if you don't believe it. You know? So so inadequacy, inadequacies and unbelief does mean you know, a couple of things that can hinder the world. Anyone else? So um, uh, the spirit moved on Saul, and God gave Saul signs to confirm his calling. Samuel first encountered Saul when the soon to be king was searching for his father's lost donkeys. Samuel told Saul that the donkeys were found. The prophet then gave Saul food and a place to stay. Samuel took Saul to the outskirts of town and privately anointed him to be king. Samuel told Saul of several signs that would confirm his calling. Each of those signs came true. Then the spirit of the Lord rushed on Saul just like on Samson, but instead of receiving super strength, the spirit moved on Saul and caused him to prophesy. The spirit changed Saul and made him into a different person. From that day on, people would ask whether Saul was one of the prophets due to the move of the Spirit in his life. So uh, I'm moving down to C. Saul felt reluctant to accept his call. Whenever we read of individuals being called in the Bible, we often see their reluctance. Moses told the Lord he had difficulty speaking. Isaiah wondered how he could declare the word of God as a man of unclean lips, dwelling among a people of unclean lips. Jeremiah felt like his youth disqualified him. Saul expressed a similar reluctance when God called him. Samuel privately anointed Saul earlier, but Saul later had a public coronation as the Lord demonstrated to the people that Saul would be king. But at first, no one could find Saul because he was hiding among the baggage. Ironically, a man who looked like a king due to his stature was trying to hide from the people. And they're saying that because he was, uh, Saul was, Saul was, uh, he was taller than everybody. Um, they don't say uh, his actual height, but they were they're thinking uh, because of the average person's height, he was probably taller than six feet. So um, when uh, some things I was researching, and um, and it was talking about the, the lesson was talking about how a leader is supposed to be, and I just decided to do my own personal small survey of the qualifications of the biblical teams versus bishops and pastors and. and, and of us that have uh, ministries and, and, and titles. And the qualifications of the biblical king, first, the king must be anointed by God. Second, the king must belong to God's people. He must be from among your own brothers. Do not place a foreigner over you who it's not our brother Israelite. Uh, church members are told that they are to choose leadership among the number of believers. The church is not to depend on sponsorship of famous names. It is to find its resources from within the body of believers. God's people should look for leaders who have proved themselves in the local church. Okay, third, the king must exercise faith. So they can't just speak it, they have to actually exercise it. Okay, fourth, the king must be loyal. He must not take many wives or his heart will be led astray. The same principle reflected in the New Testament, the elder must be the husband of both my wife. 
In Old Testament, it was common for kings to seal alliances or marriages. God said, don't do that. So uh, number five, the king must be ready for sacrifice. You know, he must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. Kings in the ancient world had the opportunity to make a pile of money. God said that the one who is given leadership, responsibility over his people must not use his privileged position, privileged position to feather his own nest. Six, the king must know the scriptures. So he can't be dumbfounded, you know, he can't, he, he has to have some knowledge. And so when the king takes the throne, he is to write for himself on the scroll a copy of, the, of, the, of this law taken from that of the priests who are the Levites. So they're supposed to know the scriptures. Seven, the king must be an example of obedience. And he should not ever consider himself better than his brothers. So I looked at that and then um, I looked at the qualification of, of, of pastor and bishop, okay? And uh, this is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 27. So when I was reading these, uh, it made me it made me think about, uh, it caused me to think about how um, when you take on this position, you take it on, you become that position, you do it as well as you can, be serious about it. So you know how, remember when we were little and we would have to, I pledge, allegiance, pledge our allegiance, you know, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to its, to its republic for which it stands for nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We even have to learn it in Spanish. Um, and we we do this a little bit daily diet on the data that was Estados Unidos de America, y a la República, República, que representa el nacimiento de los pueblos de Dios, invisible con libertad y justicia para todos, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We had to learn that yeah. every day in elementary school. So we had to know, know it. And did I say it right? I don't yes. know. Okay. So, so it's like, uh, um, it's almost like almost like a decree for this is who you are as an American and this is what we believe. And so even in history, we had to learn. Uh, no, out of nowhere, my history teacher asked us, can anybody, uh, I believe that, can anybody recite the preamble? And I was like, I was the only one able to do it because I learned in the schoolhouse rock. I don't know. I cannot believe kids, you can learn stuff through music. Because it never, never forgot. Is we the people in order to form a perfect union? No, we the people yeah. of the United States, in order to form a perfect union, establish justice, ensure, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. And I learned that. I'm making a point here. I'm not trying to, you know, my point is when I start reading this and I start reading the offices, and I'm like, D -d -d so I started at Ephesians 3, 1 through 7. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant. Sober, of good behavior, given to hospi hospitality, of apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. covetous. I, I, I always have a problem pronouncing that. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. 
Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach, reproach and in the snare of the devil. And, and, and everywhere I looked, it was pretty much saying the same thing. So I, I, I kept looking for other scriptures, and I found this one, and now everybody's familiar with this passage here. And this is what I mean by saying it, it as if it's, it's our decree. It's, it's like stating something that we believe because it's who we are. And it says, I therefore, this is found in Ephesians 4, chapters 1 through 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation whereby ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. And I think sometimes we forget this stuff, and you really need to, you know, reread it and, and, and we can, you know, just make sure you get an understanding and keep having it in your heart. And so it goes on to say, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, not starting mess, not causing division. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us given, I'm sorry, but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when we, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the, of the stature of the fulfillment of, of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more, that we, I'm sorry, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried out with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. That means uh, by the crookedness of men. That means by, 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 by men trying to deceive you. By the slight of men and cunning and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head in Christ. But whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So in that closing is to be the reasoning behind why we do what we do. Said so there's, remember we were talking about a few lessons ago, I was talking about a prerequisite to salvation. There's actually a prerequisite to ministry. When you have to, when, you're, when you're going forth, you can't just get up there and be a great orator. You have to live it. When you're talking about the things of God, you got to live this. You can't just be a person that talks about it and talks about it well, but yet somebody see you later and you're not doing what you say you're supposed to do as far as living it. 
You know, you can't be a person out there lying on people but saying God is true. You can't be a person out there causing division and confusion when the Bible clearly says God is not a God of confusion. He's not a God that causes that. You're not supposed to be that way. You know, uh, uh, you can't say you administer an elder or you want to be that leader if you don't follow them. You know, it, it clearly just stated if you can't handle your family at home, you know, being a pastor, and you, you can't handle that family. And they're not asking for the family members to be perfect, but if you can't even handle your family at home in peace, and, 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 and deal with it in a manner of godliness, then you shouldn't be pastoring anybody. That's what it's saying. You, you can't be that kind of leader that you're supposed to be if you're not living. In other words, God is calling for integrity. If you're going to be that leader, if you're going to be that call, you have to maintain that integrity. And when those experiences start happening, when we go through things, then that will actually confirm and or strengthen and edify you and and to, to keep going, and it approved you, it, 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 it approved you. It approved you so many times. There were so many things that's happened in my life that I could have handled the wrong way and had I not taken it to my leader. I might have just called somebody to go straight. I might have been in jail. I might have caused some things to happen to me that didn't have to happen. And so all he's saying is if you're going to do this your life, follow the guidelines that I've laid out for you. Have integrity behind what you're doing when, because of the call that you have. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It matters what I think. But what matters what God, what God thinks because he's the one that holds your, your destiny in his hands, your spiritual ending, your, 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 your absolute last breath when you take it. He's the one that holds your destination in his hands. So it doesn't matter what people are saying, people are doing, people that, that try to sidestep the word or People that see somebody else, and I promise you, a lot of people that sin, they do it because somebody else is doing it, so they think it's okay. I cannot tell you how many people I know that do silly stuff because other people do it. And I'm like, you can't do that, man. You can't let them become a leader. You have to, you have to, you have to swear, swear by your own hurt and change not. You can't keep being that follower. You have to, at some point, you have the right to turn around. You ain't got to keep following them. You can say to the Lord, today is the last day I follow this person or I follow this kind of thinking. Today is the very last day I do. And you can turn it around and start doing things the right way. You can. You may have to cut some friends off and, and get away from them. You may, have not, you may not have to get away from them permanently, but you do may have to get away from them just to make sure you're okay so you can strengthen and be that, that, that person that God is calling in your life. Everybody's not called to teach and preach, but some people are called to encourage. Some people are called to pray. It's the same thing. You've got to have your mindset. And I know somebody who prays all the time, and their mindset is always Jesus. It's always Jesus. i got to keep my mind in this realm because I have to be able to get a prayer through. Yeah, I can have fun. I know how to do that, and I know how to keep it light. But the bottom line is because somebody may need a prayer. Somebody may need to call them. Somebody may, you have to be in a position yes. to pray yes. on the spot. Yes. And, and some people have to have the gift of singing. They have that gift to, to just, when they sing, and they sing under such conviction and anointing that God will allow somebody to, to link to that. And it'll put them in a mindset to want to say, there, there are all kind of things that God has given us gifts that we are called to do. And you just have to have that integrity behind it. If you're serious about it, give all you can in it, exhaust yourself in it. Because yeah. once you exhaust yourself in it, God is pleased. And make sure you're giving them the glorious process. Make sure it's not, you're not, you're not saying it's you. Don't, don't make people think, oh yeah, I did that, I did this, right? No, no, this is God. No, it's not God, but it's the Christ that lives within me. Yeah. I God God has given me the ability to do that, and uh, I sent my sister a song last night. It was called uh, it was called uh, um, for the sake of the call. It was by Anointed. Was, they made that song years ago, and they brought me to that song. It was so beautiful. I forgot the, the lyrics of it. I'm talking about. I'm speaking of the lyrics, and it's such a beautiful song when we talk about the call. And they were saying in the lyrics that 
to let me encourage you, you know, stick to each other. Don't look, you know, don't look back, look straight ahead. And it's all for the sake of the call. Everything you go through is for the sake of the call. Every insult you take is for the sake of the call. You know, you, you, we know that you're putting yourself at risk. And then it goes back to me um, thinking about this response the way he used to preach. There were people who hated that man because of the way he preached. You know, he, he had them, they gave him a nickname saying he was a sin killer because he preached so effectively, so firmly in regards to the word of God. And it was to the point where before I got saved, I was even scared of it. And, but the thing is, is, is when, when after I received the Holy Ghost, he became my strength because of the way he did it, and the way he ministered. But people hated him. There are people that would send you bad letters. There were people that wanted to kill him. Somebody threatened me before in this office saying, you, you know, saying things to him. And he just, I mean, but he never stopped. You know, there were times that his daughter was in the hospital and he was preaching. He had so much faith that God was going to deliver her that he stayed there and preached anyway. And people got blessed. People got, got healed. People got, got saved. And, and she ended up fine because he just, I know in who I believe. You know, I know who I believe. He saw me preaching, so he knows what's going on because nothing catches God by surprise. So he, he understood that. And when, you, when you're under somebody who has that kind of confidence and that kind of drive, you can't help but admire that and say, Lord, help me be better. Help me be better. I'm going to be better. I, I never thought I would teach, but when I said, help me be better, help me be better. And I'm telling you, if you give yourself to your call, if you give yourself to your talents, if you give yourself to whatever you do in the house of the Lord, God will bless you. Amen. Thank you for your time. Praise all the saints. Oh, Did you enjoy the lesson? Beautiful lesson done by Mr. Troy. Glory to God. Again, we, we thank God for that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful lesson. And everything, he has so much of that. That's, that's you know, that what was, he has said. Awesome, awesome. Help to understand God's call. Glory to God. Again, we thank God. And then, I love it because also, when you see how he recited everything, <laughs> I'm sitting there like he remembered all he recited, and that just made me also said in Spanish too. I was like, oh, he said that more. He was just, I'm like, oh my god. But awesome, awesome lesson, awesome lesson. Uh, but truly, awesome lesson. Again, we thank God for uh, each and every one of us here to press the way out this morning. Thank God for allowing us to be here one more time. Thank God for the lesson, beautiful, beautiful lesson. And this time we get ready to stand and be dismissed. But again, we thank God for each one that pressed their way out this morning. And thank God for the ones that's on our different medias as well. But this time, we will stand and be dismissed. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.